Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 32 in our legendary, our new, our improved series of tutorials on the Arduino. What we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to incorporate joysticks into your Arduino project. So what I will need you to do is start with a large mug of ice cold coffee. And I will need you to get out your eLego Super Starter Kit. Don't have one? Look down in the description, click on the link, pick one up, 35 bucks from Amazon, and it has the Arduino and a boatload of components. The nice thing is, is that it does make life a little bit easier if we are working with identical hardware, so it does make things a little bit easier. So let's just jump right in and let's learn how to use this joystick. So this is the equipment that you will need after I get out of your way. This is the equipment that you will need for this project. You are going to need your breadboard. You are going to need the Arduino. You are going to need the joystick as seen here and you can find that pretty easily in your kit. You are going to need your joystick knob and then we will jump right in and start connecting things together. All right, one of the things that you notice about this uh, joystick is that it has male pins as output. So to connect it to the Arduino, you need to use this uh, ribbon cable from your kit. And you see it has female pins on one end and male pins on the other so we can connect up and then plug it in. But, <clears throat> but before we connect it, let's, uh, let's kind of understand how uh, a joystick works. And a joystick really is very simple. What it is is, is it's two potentiometers. And you've already learned how to use potentiometers because we did that in lesson number 12. Now if you're not sure how potentiometers work, I really strongly recommend that you go back and watch lesson number 12 because it will make this one a lot easier. But what this joystick is, is you can think of it as a potentiometer, which is a variable resistor, and another potentiometer. Okay, and then here is the center tap of the right potentiometer, and here is the center tap of the left potentiometer. And then this kind of is in the potentiometer case, and then in the joystick case, and then these two potentiometers share a common 5 volts, and then they share a common, they share a common ground. All right, and then also there is a switch like this. There is a switch, a switch pin that goes to ground, okay, like that. So let's look at this, and I think maybe I can zoom in a little bit, and you might be able to see this a tad bit better. All right, give it a chance. Well, ah, that focused pretty well that time, didn't it? Okay, so let's look at this. If you can see this with the pins pointing to the left, the top connection is the ground. And so that is here. Everything connects to, to the ground inside. And then you have uh, below that, you have 5 volts. The next pin is 5 volts. Well, that's the common 5 volts for both of the uh, potentiometers. Next up, you have VRX. So this would be the voltage of the resistor in the X direction. Well, what does that mean? That means this potentiometer, right, the resistance of this potentiometer changes as you move something. Well, this is saying it's in the X direction. So as I move this left and right, that's the X direction. This resistance changes and therefore this voltage changes. And similarly, over here, we have the next pin down, which is VRY. VRY. And so VRY is the tap, the center tap off of this second potentiometer. Now this switch down here is normally open, but we have the ability, if the knob is on, okay, so we can go left and right changes VRX up and down, okay, up and down, 
change VRY. And then if we take this and press it, you hear a click, or maybe you can't hear a click. Maybe you can hear a click. Okay. That click is opening and closing this switch. And so the joystick is really very simple to operate if you understand the operation of potentiometers. But if you had two potentiometers and just turning them like this, it's not as intuitive as having this. And you can think sort of like an airplane goes down, an airplane goes up, and an airplane goes left, and an airplane goes right. So like if you're trying to control something like drive a robot or control some flying device or, or other things like that, the joystick is a very intuitive way to give input to your circuit. OK, let's try to get together and hook this thing up. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to bring my ribbon cable in. And then let's see if this, this might be a suitable magnification to show this. But we need the female ends towards the joystick. And I'm going to start with the black on top. Because what is our first connection? Our first connection is, oh my goodness, let me see if I can dismiss that. OK, sorry about that. All right. so. Everyone is trying to call me today. OK, so we're going to take the black wire, which is the top one, and we are going to hook it to ground. The next wire is the white one, and it goes to 5 volts. Stop that nonsense. All right. The next one is VRX. That is that center tap on the X potentiometer. And it looks like that next wire will be the gray wire. OK. And then we have the next wire is the purple wire, which will go to VRY. You see, I'm just hooking them in order, in the order that they're coming. And then the next one is the switch. And the next wire is the blue wire. OK. And when I can, I like to kind of hook things up in a way that have meaning. And so a lot of times ground is black. And a lot of times the hot wire can be like white or red. And so it sort of makes sense to hook it up that way. So now we have this hooked up. Now let's hook up over on the Arduino side. And on the Arduino side, we had, OK, first the black was ground. And so I'm going to put the black over here to the GND. And I'm going to use the GND that is next to 5 volts. Why am I going to do that? Because my next pin, my white wire, is 5 volts. And you see, if I put those together, the wires that are adjacent plug into adjacent pins. So uh, white goes to 5 volts, and then black goes to ground. The next one, gray, I believe, if I am not mistaken, gray was uh, VX, that X potentiometer. So I will put that in A0, because again, A0 is very handy. I could put it in any of those A pins, but A0 is nearby and handy. Let me see. I am. Ah, that's a pretty good focus. And then the brown wire is the next one, which is uh, the voltage across the Y potentiometer. So I will plug that in. And then we're left with the blue wire. And the blue wire, we will do a digital read on that. And so I will connect that over here to digital pin 2. And now I have this hooked up. And it's hard to get this. It's hard, hard, hard to get this where it stays upright because this cable is kind of stiff. And so it is going to be hard for me to make this as neat as I want it. So now if I come over here, we haven't written our code yet. But if I put this back on here, if I move it left and right, I should be changing the VX value. If I move it up and down, I should be changing the VY value. Now, if we are doing analog reads on those voltages, we know that we read a number between 0 and 1023, a number between 0 and 1023. Well, let's think about X. 
In the neutral position, this is up, so we would expect that to be in the middle, which would be about 512. And coming this way, we would be moving towards 0 on the x. And coming this way, we should be moving towards 1023. In the y, we should be reading about 512 in the neutral position. And the way this works is it goes down when you go up, and then it comes up when you pull back. And so it's kind of like an airplane. That if the stick goes forward, the nose goes down. So if the stick goes forward, the value that you read goes down, if I remember this right. All right. In, fa in fact, I did it wrong because this should have been to the left. And so with it like in this orientation, x is low, x is high, y is low, y is high. But you'll figure that out when you read the values. And so let's see if we can move back and actually start coding. Okay, let's start coding. So I will come I will come over to this other view. Let's get a good view here. I think this is a pretty good view. All right, so we're going to think about programming this joystick. We're going to think about it as two potentiometers. And so let's think what we need to do. We need to set up our pins. Well, what all pins do we have? Well, we have a uh, X pin. And the X pin, I believe, was a 0, if I'm not mistaken. The gray goes to, oh, and I pulled these wires off as I was twisting around. Let me get those back on. These ribbon cables are kind of stiff, so they're a little hard to, uh, they're a little hard to do. Okay, so the gray is, is X, and so X pin is A0. And then remember the Y pin was right next to it, which was A1. <clears throat> and then we also had the uh, switch, we'll call it switch pin, and that was digital pin 2. Okay, now we're going to read values, and so I'm going to have an, an X val, and that is not going to be set because we're going to read it, and then I'm going to have a Y val, and I'm not going to set that because I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to have a switch val, switch val. And understand the switch is going to be a digital read, so it's going to read either a 0 or a 1. If the switch is up, it should read a 0, and no, if the switch is up, it should read a 1, and then if you press the switch down, it should read a 0. All right, now we need to turn on our serial monitor, so I will do serial dot begin for the most excellent 9600 baud rate. I will do my pin modes. We are going to set uh, X pin as an input. As you could imagine, pin, pin mode, and that is pin mode, not pin modes, pin mode. Uh, pin mode Y pin is an input, input like that, and then pin mode S pin is also an in input. Okay, now S pin is an input, it's pin 2. What we want to do is we want to do a digital read from it, but remember it's just a switch. So the way we would need to do it is we would need to put a pull-up resistor in series with a voltage and then read off of that. But the easier thing that you can do is, is that if you set pin 2, if you set S pin to high, even though you're saying it's an input, set it to high, you'll have that pull-up resistor already in there and the pin will be high and so it'll work without having to do any other circuitry. Hope you understand. If you don't, go back and look at our series of lessons on using pull-up and pull-down resistors with, uh, with switches and might, uh, might help you uh, understand pull-up resistors a little bit. So I need to do a digital write and I'm going to digital write S pin high. And that will set it up where we can read from it without having to do a lot of external circuitry. <clears throat> All right, we are down here in our void loop. What do we need to do? Well, I need to read XVAL. So my XVAL is going to be analog read. 
And where do I read from? Xpen. Do you guys see if you name your variables good, how much easier it is to write code? And now similarly, analogously, perhaps I should say, yval is equal to analog read. And I'm going to read ypen. Okay. And then uh, sval is going to equal to, remember, that was a digital pen. And we're just looking for a 0 or a 1. So I will do a digital read. And then what am I going to read? S pen. All right, I have three values now. What am I going to do? I'm going to delay just so it doesn't go too fast. I'm going to delay by DT delay time. And I need to uh, be a good boy and come up here and declare that variable. <coughs> and delay time is equal to, let's say, 200. That should be about right. That looks pretty good. Now what I want to do is I want to print out these values that I have done. And I want to print them all out in a row so I can see my x value, I can see my y value, and I can see my switch uh, state. So I will do a series of serial <coughs> dot print. And remember print goes across only when you use a print ln does it go to the next line. So I'm going to serial dot print and I'm going to say x value equal and in quotes I'm printing a string right in quotes I'm printing a string and then serial dot dot print now what do I want to print I want to print x val <coughs> okay <clears throat> serial dot print now what do I want to print the string y value equal <clears throat> close that up. Now I want to serial.print. What am I going to print? The variable yval, yval, like that. Now serial.print, and I will say the switch state is And that will be a 1 in the unswitch position. And then when I switch it, it'll be a 0, if I am thinking about it right, which I think I am. Oh, serial pint. No. Serial print. Serial dot print. This is the last one, so I'll use the ln, so it'll bring you back to the next line. And I will print sval. Okay, man, I wrote a lot of code there really quick. What are the chances it is going to work? Better take a shot of coffee. I need everyone to hold their breath while I am downloading this. If everyone holds their breath, it will work. <sighs> Boom! It worked. It actually, well, I shouldn't say it worked. I should say that it downloaded. Okay, so uh, let's come over here and let's look at my, uh, let's look at my serial monitor. I will have to find a suitable window. That looks like a suitable window. All right, one thing that I see right off the bat is I should have put a space before the Y in the string so that the Y doesn't run into the X. And similarly, the, before the S, I should have put a space because that's 508 and then Y, and that doesn't make sense. I am a stickler for good formatting. So we're going to come over here, and before the Y, we're going to put a space. And before the S and switch, we're going to put a space, and then we are going to download this again. Boom. All right, man. I am I am gonna I am going to say that this is good. All right, so hopefully you can see it. I'll be mindful up here on the camera. Let me see if I can get out of your way further. All right. Now, does this make sense? This sort of makes sense. How does it make sense? Well, we would expect the potentiometer, and let's think about the X potentiometer on the joystick. We would expect it to go from 0 to 1023, from 0 to 1023. Well, this neutral position is kind of up. We would expect it about in the middle, and 508 is about in the middle of 0 to 1023, about. And then on Y, 
0 to 1023, we, we would expect that to be in the middle in the neutral position, and that is 512, 511, that is about in the middle. And then the switch has not been pressed, and so it is in the one state, as I correctly anticipated on that. Okay, now let's see what happens. I'm going to move it to the left. We expect the x value to start going down. What's happening? Boom! The x is going down all the way to zero. Look at that. What if I go the other way? X comes up, up, up. Okay. Up, up, up. Look at that. All the way to 1023, and then it goes back to the middle position. This is working like a charm. And if I move it carefully, I can move the X value without really affecting the Y value. Do you see that? Now, Y, we're going to go this way. And so I'm going to go up and look, Y comes down all the way to zero, back to neutral. Now it's going to go as I pull it back to 1023. All right. Now if I go here like this, I can change X and Y. So if I go right and down, at least my right and my down, like that to the corner, look at that, I get 1023, 1023. What if I go up and to the left? I'm going to expect 0, 0 which I can get there, 0, 0, up and to the left, down and to the left, I get about 0 in 1023, okay, up and to the right, I get 1023 and 0. So do you see the fine control that you can get with a joystick on something like controlling position or controlling two different things very precisely? It works way better than sitting and turning two knobs. It's really a very, very effective input device. But the moment you have all been waiting for, if I press this, does it recognize it as a switch? Hold your breath. Boom, I got a zero, I let it go, I get a one. Look at that, boom, zero, one. There's been no trick photography here, no sleight of hand. This thing is actually working. This thing is actually working. Okay, guys. This has been a fun project. I really like joysticks. They're a great way to get input into your, pro, uh, into your programs. And so I'm going to give you a heads up on what the next lesson is going to be, the lesson number 33. I am going to have you have your circuit, your joystick circuit, control two potentiometers. Left and right on, uh, control two servos. Left and right on your joystick will move this servo from like, let's say that the neutral position is 90 and then left is going to be 0 to 180. And then the Y potentiometer on the joystick is going to take this one from 0 to 180. Why is that neat? Well, imagine if I put this servo on top of this servo like this, then you could twist it this way and you could point it this way. So imagine if you had a little laser pointer on here using proper eye protection and the low power cheap ones that you buy at Walmart and taking uh, all the proper precautions. You could take this and then you could aim the laser around the room using your joystick and that should be a whole lot of fun. Okay guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechToy.com. I hope you guys will leave a comment down below. In fact, you know what? I really wonder, I will be honest with you, I wonder I wonder if anyone actually watches these videos to the end. Does anyone watch these videos to the end? If you did, let's see. Let me know you watched all the way to the end by leaving a comment of what the secret word is for today. The secret word for today is indigo. And there you see indigo, my faithful guard dog in Africa. This is my home, home, uh, home compound. Uh, in Africa, and Indigo is my most, most faithful guard dog. Okay, so if you watched all the way to the end, type Indigo to let me know. Also, uh, you might think about subscribing to the channel, might think about giving me a thumbs up, sharing with other people, and let's get ready for that project next week. Oh, I forgot to tell you, you need to get these two servos because the servos that are in the, uh, the one servo that is in the uh, eLego kit is kind of a cheap one. Get you a couple of these in the link down below in the description. Because really, if you're going to be doing any pro, pro, you know, any projects, you want to have in your workbench some nice uh, servos. And these are really nice ones. They have a nice full range of motion. 
and they're very smooth and very precise and so I think these are 13 14 bucks a piece and it's good to have a couple of these in your toolkit okay remember what was the secret word the secret word for the day was indigo Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com I will talk to you guys